In this example procedure, you will create a backup internet connection with your FortiGate unit so that if the primary internet connection fails, some or all traffic automatically switches to the backup internet connection. When the primary internet connection is restored, traffic automatically switches back to it. Ideally, the primary and backup internet connections would be from different ISPs, minimizing the chances of both being affected at the same time. In this solution, the primary ISP is connected to WAN 1 with a static IP, and the backup ISP is connected to WAN 2 using DHCP. Connect the FortiGate Unit WAN 1 interface to your primary ISP supplied equipment. Connect the internal network to the internal interface. Edit the WAN 1 and internal interfaces to have manual mode addressing. Create a default route. Add primary and secondary DNS servers. Create a security policy that allows users on the private network to access the Internet. Select Enable NAT and Use Destination Interface Address. Connect the WAN2 interface to your backup ISP supplied equipment. Set the addressing mode of WAN2 to DHCP and select Retrieve Default Gateway from Server. Clear the checkbox for Override Internal DNS. Select OK to save the changes. If everything is connected correctly, the WAN2 interface should acquire an IP address from the ISP's DHCP server. This can take a few minutes. You can select the status link to refresh the display. Eventually, an obtained IP netmask should appear. If the ISP's DHCP server supplies DNS server IP addresses in a default gateway, they should also appear. Make sure Retrieve Default Gateway from Server is selected so that the default route is added to the routing table. Normally, in a dual internet configuration, you would not select Override Internal DNS because you do not want the FortiGate unit to use the backup ISP's DNS server. Create a security policy that allows users on the private network to access the Internet through the WAN2 interface. Select Enable NAT and Use Destination Interface Address. The FortiGate unit now has two default routes, one that directs traffic to WAN1 and one that directs traffic to WAN2. The default route to WAN2 is obtained from the backup ISP's DHCP server. The ping servers verify the ability of the WAN1 and WAN2 interfaces to connect to the Internet. Edit the WAN1 default route and set the distance to 10. The distance may already be set to 10, so you may not have to change it. Edit the WAN2 interface and set the distance to 20, or any number larger than 10. To confirm which default route is now actually being used by the FortiGate unit, go to the routing monitor to view the current FortiGate routing table. Routes that are not active do not appear on the routing monitor. In this example, only the one static route should appear, the WAN1 default route. 
The distance should be 10. Connected routes for the connected interfaces should also appear. If you edit the WAN2 interface and set the distance to a lower value, say 5, the WAN1 default route is removed from the router monitor and is replaced with the WAN2 default route because the WAN2 route now has a lower distance. You can also have both default routes appear in the router monitor by setting their distances to the same value. When both routes have the same distance, this is known as equal cost multipath routing or ECMP and both routes are used. Sessions are load balanced between them. Go to the router list and select create new to add the WAN1 ping server. Select Create New and add the WAN2 ping server. The WAN2 ping server is optional for this configuration. However, adding the WAN2 ping server means the 48 unit will record log messages when the WAN2 ping server can't reach its destination. If the WAN1 ping server can connect to its ping server IP address, the routing monitor appears with a default route to the WAN1 interface. All traffic to the internet uses the WAN1 interface and the internal to WAN1 security policy. You can verify this by viewing the routing monitor and by going to the security policy list and viewing the count column for the internal to WAN1 and internal to WAN2 policies while connected to the internet. The internal to WAN1 policy count increases while the internal to WAN2 count remains the same. If you change the network so that the WAN1 ping server cannot connect to its ping server IP address by physically disconnecting the cable from the WAN1 interface, for example, the default route should change to the WAN2 interface, called default route failover. With the WAN2 link active, connect to the internet from the internal network. If you can connect, this confirms the dual internet connection configuration is correct. View the security policy count column for the internal to WAN2 policy. The count increases, indicating that this policy is accepting traffic. When you restore the WAN1 interface's connection, the ping server detects that the connection is restored and the routing table reverts to including the WAN1 default route. All new sessions will use the internal to WAN1 security policy. Sessions that were established using the internal to WAN2 security policy will continue to use this policy and the WAN2 interface until they are terminated. However, all new sessions will use the internal to WAN1 security policy. Outgoing sessions and their responses that are in progress during the failover will have to be restarted since responses to traffic sent out on one interface will not come back on another.